Hello and welcome back to Media Beat. I'm Chris Aarons, Editorial Director here at MediaBistro.com. And we're talking with Tucker Carlson, co-founder of The Daily Caller. Uh, but we want to talk in this segment a little bit about your TV days. Yes. Uh, you had a show, Crossfire, on CNN for many, many years. You went to MSNBC. You had a show there for several years. Uh, do you miss having a daily television show? No. I mean, having a, you know, having a daily show is, is the focus of your life. I mean, there's no kind of, you know, second job that you would go to after because it just, it takes over every, every part of your, mm -hmm. your daily life. There's nothing wrong with that. It's absorbing and that's what you want a job to be. But, you know, I did it for 10 years and that seems like a good span of time to do it for. And I, I, I was always treated really well, I have mm -hmm. to say. Everyone I worked for was very nice to me, didn't always agree with what they were doing. They sometimes fired me, as I said. Uh, but they were nice to me even then. So, you know, I don't have a single complaint about any of it. But, you know, you get older, it's time to go do something else. And I'm right. glad not to be doing that. Um, do you wish you had uh, copyrighted the situation? Considering the popularity <laughs> that it now has with a certain MTV show. That's true. Right? I, that was the MSNBC You know, I can't, I can't even take credit for that. That was the idea of Bill Wolf, who now runs Rachel Maddow's show over That's at right. MSNBC, who's just a... Just a complete genius and a hilarious guy. And um, I, even though we had that show for a couple of years, I never really figured out what the, what the situation <laughs> meant. Um, and I would say to Bill, why are we calling the show The Situation? And he would say, oh, it's a situation. He had this long, I can't, I can't replicate it here. But yeah, probably should have thought ahead on that. Yeah. And uh, you had a sort of a sidekick on that show. You're kind of Andy Richter in uh, Willie Geist. Ah, oh, who's going on great guy. Great things at MSNBC. He's Which is no surprise, by the way. Yeah. The first time I had dinner with Willie Geist, I, I, th I thought it was, just, it was, Crystal clear, this guy is going to be a, is going to be a great success. Yeah. So I mean, if Willie takes over the network and then takes over the parent company, it will not surprise me at all. So now you're with Fox News. You're a contributor there in addition to all your duties at, at the Daily Caller. Yep. How long is that deal for? How often are you appearing on the air? What kind of shows are you getting on? I, you know, I've re-upped. I guess I re-upped in the May, maybe mm -hmm. of last year. So for my second year, I mean, I hope it continues forever. There, they they couldn't be nicer. They're really smart. They know exactly what they're doing. It's not heavy lifting on my part. I'm not you know, carrying the network or anything. I'm just going on there. From my point of view, it, everything about it is great. I really like Bill Shine. I really like all the producers, and um, and I just I don't don't have a single complaint. I mean, I'm actually going on Hannity tonight. I don't know. I do. I don't know how often I do it. You know, a lot. Yeah. Good when they need you. Yeah. I don't. Know. I don't know if they. I, that's the weird thing about appearing on Fox is they actually don't need you. You know, you work at other channels and you feel like, or I have felt, I've deluded myself into thinking, you know, this show is kind of important to the channel. The truth is, I'm not sure any one person, I'm certainly not important to Fox, obviously, but I don't think in any context any person ever carries a, a network. Yeah. I think that's the kind of thing that TV people convince themselves of, uh, usually to their de detriment. Mm -hmm. They usually end up getting fired over those delusions. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't fire me! Well, yeah, we can. Are you thinking of someone in particular? No. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of every person I've ever known in television. That's yeah. a lot of people. Okay. Yeah, you just convince yourself, like, I'm integral. People are tuning in to see me. It's all about me. Why am I not in the promos? You know, yeah. you don't love me as much as I need to be loved. I mean, ah. Oh, it's that red light fever. They see it go on, and they, they want the attention, and they crave it, and then once it's not there. Yeah, I would just, I think it's really important to have a happy marriage and to have, you know, children who love you and whom you love and a lot of dogs you know dogs are key <laughs> you know what I mean you don't want to go home to an empty apartment right. because then you spend the rest of your day pining for the you know the the affirmation of, of viewers and that's that's sick right so before the web before TV you were a print guy uh, oh yes for a long time so which one is most gratifying do you think the television the web stuff you're doing now well the they're gratifying print. in different ways I mean print is the opportunity to create something lasting Writing a story gives you time to ruminate about the subject, and so you end up learning a lot. You also get to travel all these great places and really think through what's happening and what it means. So it's a, I love it, and I try to do it. You know, once a year, write a big story. Um, television is all is crack. I mean, it's just like immediate live television. Tape television, not so fun. Live, great because you can completely fail and blow up and destroy your life instantly. And so the threat of that, you know, keeps it exciting and I love that. Have you been close to Oh gosh, of course. Or have you gone beyond that? You know, it's a completely different environment now. When I started in the mid-90s at CNN, I mean, you could say all kinds of things or would say things accidentally. If you're if you're talking for 5 hours a week live, you're going to say something stupid sooner rather than later. And people didn't really notice. Did you hear what he said? Oh no, I didn't hear it. Now, instantly 
you're picking it up, yep. right? And we're tweeting it. That's we're exactly. You've kind of it, destroyed right? television, uh, Chris. <laughs> and I was, from the, no, actually, you've made it better. Made it, yeah. But from the point of view of the hosts and pe the people appearing, the peril is greater because nothing gets by. I mean, especially, you know, there are all kinds of creepy political groups on the left. I would say, especially who sit around and got the you know, whole team of little vermals who are, you know, watching every moment, waiting for you to say something dumb. Um, but the excitement is there. And then online, at least for me, it's the opportunity to build a business and to shepherd young journalists along and, and to see something arise out of nothing, which is a great experience. Great. We're talking with Tucker Carlson. Uh, next segment, we want to talk a little bit more about politics since this guy knows a lot about politics. So stick around.